Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. And I'm here today with uh, another day talking about this man named Jacob. Now, I've been talking about it for about a week and a half, and we found some interesting things about it. Find a few more yet to come. And today brings us to the point where he's on his way back home. And he's heard about Esau, and he's heard about his army. And so he sent a lot of animals and people and whatnot trying to soften him up, if you will. And this, this particular passage from Genesis chapter 32, beginning with, with verse uh, 24, we'll do 23, uh, we find these words. After taking them to the other side, that's all of his family and what that's left, and he says, he sent over all his possessions, the other side of the Jabbok River. This left jo Jacob alone in the camp, and a man came and wrestled with him until dawn began to break. When the man saw that he would not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its socket. Then the man said, let me go for dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. He replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob. The man told him, from now on you will be called Israel because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Please tell me your name, Jacob said. Why do you want to know, why do you want to know my name? The man replied, and then he blessed Jacob. And Jacob named the place Benil, which means face of God. For he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. We're seeing Joseph now as a different man than he has been up to this point. He's gone through a lot, and he's changed. He's changed from that younger fellow who cheated his brother and connived to steal something very precious from him, his father's blessing. And so now he's going back home, and he's scared. And I don't blame him. He's got to go back and face the consequences of what he did to the very man who had sworn to kill him. Now, I can't tell you that he's necessarily done it in the most appropriate way. <laughs> he, he's still trying to, he's tr still trying to get an edge up somehow, either by bribing Esau or now with this, with this wrestling match. And it's a little strange. Uh, people have written about it for years thousands of years probably they've talked about it and if we look at it just as to what Jacob describes it was a wrestling match now it appeared it was a man but evidently it wasn't a man it was it was something heavenly and they wrestled and wrestled and wrestled all night long you'd think somebody would have given up out of being exhausted before they got that far but they don't, and the sun is coming, and the guy that he's wrestling with says, you gotta, let, you gotta let go, and Jacob hangs on tight. So he touches his hip, and it jumps out of the socket. You know, poor, at that point, poor Jacob is done. But he's still hanging on. And he says to him, you gotta bless me, or I won't let you go. What does it mean to be blessed in this fashion? He's saying to this God, he's already recognized there's something unusual about him. And he wants what he perceives to be a supernatural somebody to give him peace and assurance that he's going to be okay. So what does the man that he wrestled with 
What does he do? He changes his name. Now, in our day, people change their names often when they get married, when they want a different set of circumstances. Um, sometimes they just do it because they want to. Sometimes they do it because it, there's a meaning to it. And sometimes it just seems sort of frivolous. But you didn't do that in Jacob's day. The name you had was everything you had. It identified you. It explained you. It put you in a place in history. And you would never change that. Now, we know that God changed Abram's name to Abraham. And he changed Sarai's name to Sarah just before they were to have a child. It was a monumental change that was brought about by a change in the name. And so here we find Jacob in the same situation. This person says, from now on, you will not be called Jacob but you will be called Israel. Now, Israel represents the entire descendants that are even yet to come. Jacob represents one man. You see how much the vision of this person is no longer what it once was? God is saying, in this change of names, you are going to be something very different. And so Jacob says, who are you? And he won't answer it. Jacob decides it was God himself. Now, we know that you can't see God face to face in an as an earthly being. To do so is to die. Now, when we die, that's a different matter. You can't look on a perfect spiritual being, being with a flawed earthly shell. But he recognizes that this was God. And so he builds an altar to him. And perhaps at this point, Jacob. Israel realizes God's going to honor him. Just as he said back in Genesis 28 that I talked about exactly a week ago. There he said, if you will do this, 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 and this, then you will be my God. Now, a number of years later, he recognizes who God is. Perhaps you are recognizing who God is in your life. Perhaps you're not. Okay. It's not important where you are in this journey. What's important is which way are you going. And I hope that you're going in the direction of walking more with God. If you want him to be your God and to know that you're not at this, game of life all by yourself, then I suggest you, you get moving towards it. You think about it. You know your life. I know mine. And I wish you the best. Now, in the meantime, if you have a need or a concern, let us know. We'll do whatever we can, as fast as you can, to help meet your need. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a great day. I'll be back tomorrow with another thought about this man, Jacob, now called Israel.